Hits and Crits. This video is brought to you by Trading Goblin. What's up, Hits and Crits family? Another episode, uh, close to the last one, season four update on Free Folk with uh, uh, the one and only Daniel Larks is here today um, to cover Free Folk. And there, f for me, there's no one better to talk about the season four changes on the Free Folk. Uh, very great uh, to have you. Thanks for having me. Um, yeah, so to get to get it like out of the way, um, we had some general changes in the game. We already covered that with Randall and with Dennis in in, 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 in past videos. So namely for the for, for free folk it's battle scars, overrun and predictable maneuvers in on attachments, on cards, on whatever. So like first question from my side for you, Daniel, would be do those general changes really affect free folk does it like ma does it make uh torment giants bane like way better so you pick them more or does it like like uh, w wear down man's because of predictable maneuvers because in general his cards are good so what is your overall impression on the uh general changes um yeah like the the general theme of um the patch and the impact it had on um, the free frog meta is kind of yeah, um, it was not that impactful so to speak. Like regarding the meta, I think it didn't change too much there, but it changed some yeah some things like internally more regarding the units that you would pick, for example, or how you build your meta list a little bit. But it's uh, yeah no big changes to the commanders or or anything. So I think like it pushed certain commanders a little bit like. It's obviously cool for for Tormund. It's obviously cool for Mac um, to have the changes to Overrun, for example. Mm. But yeah, it's not like shooting them into higher levels or anything. Mm -hmm. um, and same for Mans. I think like um, Mans got some other changes in the patch as well. And I think the um, predictable maneuver changes. It's, it's yeah, it, it, it's not helping him by any means, but it's also not that impactful that you now would not pick him if you liked him before, in my opinion. What is nice is um, the change to Battle Scars. That's, it, I think it's a very strong ability in the new patch. And um, that is, yeah, very welcomed. And in my opinion, helps, uh, for example, um, the Cave Dweller unit very much. It's a very good ability in the Cave Dwellers. Um, yeah, so that is that's neat, but also not a big change. Mm. All right. Okay, so um, like one thing I saw the battle scars. Uh, we we talked in earlier videos is is a really good change, right? Made a lot of stuff better because it's like not a passive thing anymore, where you like got buffed by your by, by your opponent and your opponent was like able to play around it or you know to to not to not buff you up and now you can always choose and so 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 you can actively make units better so i like that in the great, great walrus especially when you think like uh battle endurance and all that kind of stuff and certain units and like in our pre uh, discussion you said that like almost every unit within free folk is now playable viable good options again almost we will cover that later but so I really like the changes, but what we, yeah, what we're really interested in today is what do those changes really impact in terms of meta, list building, and commander picks, right? So, um, yeah, and to, to, to kick those things off, I think we should um, start with Man's Raider. So Man's Raider, King Beyond the Wall, got the King is Dead removed, which is basically a big punishment because you would score more uh, victory points um, out of him. Um, yeah, so what do you think about Mance? Yeah, I think, first of all, good change. Like in S2 and, and before, he was like everywhere. He was the boogeyman, you know. Um, he was pretty much free folk. He was free folk, basically. And in S, uh, S3, they nerfed him to, into the ground. And now yeah. I think he's playable again um, because at least you don't, yeah. Run, run around the risk of uh, giving two two VPs to your opponent, mm -hmm. but for me, 
I mean, I have a specific, very competitive oriented view on Free Frog. And for me, yeah, I saw that and, and thought, okay, nice. But still, like, the, the package yeah. um, is not better than Steyr or Vermeer. So mm. for me, it's still a pass. But I think he has, um, he has strength. And now he has one big um, disadvantage less. So give him a try. I, he's not a bad commander by any means. Like, no way. He has strong cards. Um, I mean, at least one strong card. Um, so, yeah, good change for me. Not impactful in, in the competitive way. But, um, you know, if the next patch comes around and he gets like one or two mm -hmm. little tweaks, he, he's, uh, he's in a good spot now. Got it. Um, when I first saw the changes, I was thinking, right, uh, and we will talk about it later again um, um, when we talk... Um, um, Craster, right? So Craster used to heal basically everyone and they changed it to infantry. So I was thinking that by the designers, they think we want those like horde armies back, yeah. right? We want man's commanding, I don't know, five, five raider trays and like, you know, do, do, do the stuff he used to do. Um, so, uh, but we, we will cover that later, but I was thinking that that might fuel into taking that punishment away from man's doing craster changing craster into infantry or just doing infantry so um yeah I, I was thinking that might be a push from the designers hey play go away from 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 giant lists go go away from this veramir 10 activation thing go back to we want a lot of trappers a lot of raiders right um yeah and and, and man's is still good for that right so yeah. um he, he he might be your alternative if you don't want to play style yeah totally fine Cool. Okay. Right. So next one, or next up, would be the skin changer, the attachment skin changer. The points got decreased from two to one. So in general, at least what I see in Germany, skin changes are not like why, like like everywhere. Um, I see them sometimes, and I especially at the War of the North tournament, at our tournament in Hamburg, we had. Um, I forgot his name actually, but he was one of the Rotted and White Scars crew basically, and he he had I, I guess both lists had skin changes in them. And what I heard um, on those two days were were uh, or or was that he was playing those skin changes like very very good. And uh, maybe we can cover that a little um, because I never tried it to play it. I, I I rarely played against it, so maybe we can cover that a little. Does that really does that make a difference? From two to one yeah for me for me it makes a difference um you know back in the day the skin changer they were a real menace when uh the bear was there permanent permanently um but in the time between it was always a very cool thematic interesting um yeah. attachment and i think now it's viable uh once more and especially uh in um in junction with something like man's um, or Steyr, you can create like really, really tanky, grindy um, infantry formations because the attachment gives you the stalwart. Um, it can sp spawn the bear if you're in contact, mind you. So, um, and then you have the bear, which can al also uh, activate once more during the round. So you can, yeah, um, can make up your your activation count. You can um, uh, leave the bear in contact, retreat the raiders, and yeah, it, it's it's a real real cool thing. And I think um, the person you mentioned was Oliver. Um, yeah, I played against him in a mirror, and um, yeah, he he did it very well. But um, there are ways to play around the skin changer, um, especially if you yeah avoid um, melee contact in a way mm -hmm. and so on. So, um, but also the other animals have niche cases; they can manipulate movement with shifts and um the wolf right yeah it's yeah it's, yeah. Yeah, it's, it's a very interesting very interesting uh and good attachment now so that is that's pretty cool and i i do play often in uh, online tts tournaments with international players and um actually i have, I have a free folk game scheduled for sunday and um yeah it's free folk mirror that is and um yeah my opponents regularly play one or two skin changes in uh, in the list so i think um it made okay. a difference for sure Okay. 
that's a really cool insight because like when I just just, just talking locally, right? Around the, like the northern part of of Germany, I I really do not see skin change, skin changes a lot. Like people I I see Steyr a lot, right? Obviously, you see you see spam list with with Veramir, obviously. Uh giant list still even with 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 Craster changed, but um um, yeah, I never really see skin changes, so that might be a call out to all of you, right? Try the skin changers, try them out. Um, Larks approve, right? So, um, yeah. okay. So, next change would be, and I think that one of the most impactful ones, is that Borog's Boar goes from two points to zero points. So, it just comes with it. And gives you like a free activation. I know there is like there is the restriction of it needs to be activated right away, right? There is that restriction, but from from a receiving end, so to say, um, I see that's really that can be really powerful. So what do you think? Uh, yeah, I think if you play free frog, right, um, you have to have a heart for animals, and um, <laughs> it's a sp it's a very cool animal. Yeah. And um, I always uh, looked at it um, before the patch and thought, yeah, it's so cool, it's nice. But it, it wasn't worth it yeah, before. Yeah, exactly. And now it's free. And it comes with an attachment, which is like probably the best attachment or one of the best attachments anyway, right? So, yes. Uh, yeah, that is, um, I think many, many players, like very high level players uh, looked at this and uh, thought like, oh, that could be problematic. I, I don't mm. think it is, but um, it's, yeah, it's impactful. And um, there are like certain little uh, tricks to it as well, because it's the only animal, if you like um, think of the other animals from, from Baromir and so, and so on, or the bears from the skin changer, which can um, claim objectives. Yeah, score, score from objectives, yeah. yeah. That is pretty good. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and it also like, if you kill the unit um, with Barak, the, uh, the boar stays. It stays yes. Yes. until... until the start round. start start of next round start so, of you next do, round. so you so do you do score, score. yeah one great. more time you cannot activate um mm. but so yeah that is cool and it it's a solo tray it's it, it has three attacks thundering three plus so that's good yeah. um it, it can block charges it's very versatile so nice um but it does not give you an activation yeah but it does count against um like it does count for past tokens so if you have a nine mm. versus nine activation matchup mm. free fork mirror you for would, example you would give your and opponent... one has the bar you mm. would give your opponent two past, past token yeah oh yeah two percent yeah yeah so yeah. this is something to keep in mind which can backfire which is why certain players tend to not include the bar even if they could for free really? at least in certain lists mm. so okay yeah, great. Um, awesome insights. I did not really know that, that you even on a competitive level might not take it, right? To um, to, to not get into this disadvantage of, of like the pa or giving your opponent the pass tokens. Uh, that's really insightful. Um, yeah. So, Borok's board done. Let's take a look at the Frozen, Sh Frozen Shore Hunters. Frozen Shore Hunters, um, I remember uh, coming out and there was this little... Um, <laughs> error <laughs> exactly and everyone was on the international discord and everyone was like man those, those guys need strong arms man <laughs> like to, to to throw spears there were so range. so nice memes out there yeah. <laughs> exactly exactly so that's what i remember and um, i saw him around quite quite a bit but i feel um with the change on the on the melee and the um, ranged attack so it got way better from 654 to 664 so that's quite decent, right? And the changes to the harpoon even makes this unit such an incredible tech piece for your army. That's how I see it. Again, mostly from the receiving end. I played it once or twice, but it's not my main. It's not It's not what I do regularly. So how do you feel about the Frozen Shore Hunters? Um, yeah, they added really a strong ability to, to harpoon or strong effect rather. Um, so if you do any wound uh, with the attack, um, your opponent's unit is reduced in movement by one for the mm -hmm. whole round. Mm -hmm. And every charge this unit makes during the round um, will be a disorderly charge. Yeah. So this is, this is strong, um, at least in theory. Um, 
and the unit itself already has mark target which is like a crazy force multiplier um yeah. especially in combination with traps yeah. so yeah it's an interesting unit and if you really want to stop one important unit of your um opponent in its tracks i think that's the way to go mm. and um i didn't play it or end up playing it too much myself but but it's because like the lists that i play there are so like optimized and tightly tweaked like there's no space for it but i really want to play it more and i see uh, definitely that if you put it on the table it will be of great use um the only thing is if you put the units you want to get this effect off against might be units with heavy armor and dealing a wound with your four plus attack profile might be trickier than it looks like so yeah. and there might be situations where you don't get a wound through which would be really yeah really sad in this very yeah. circumstance yeah. yeah but a little uh uh point point to it is even if you do not deal a wound they at least right they 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 throw out a weakened token which is not bad either i mean it's not as good as the harpoon uh, the the other harpoon effect but at least you can weaken out as you said like a heavy armor unit or even let's say a heavy calf maybe you can at least weaken them right um which is good, and what we get, my, must not forget in all in, in in everything we discuss, it's a five point unit, right? All, it, all, yeah. all those those free folk units come so cheap, so I, I think that this combo is is uh, can be really 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 good. Yeah, and and, and like free folk um, as a faction has glaring weaknesses, and one is token play, and um, it doesn't have like. Yeah, really good token play, and this yeah. unit covers this weakness. So. Covers that, yeah, yeah, yeah. So one sentence I I have left on because you mentioned traps, right? I think traps can be described for the free folk faction right now in in season um, uh, four right now is one key element, one key pillar of play when playing yep. free folk to have a hidden trap spam, right? At least I would say at least one. But better is two, right? And uh, as you said, if this unit, if you train... The more the better. <laughs> the more the better. And, and like, if you train to put this unit somewhere within, so you get the hidden traps and maybe... I don't know, is Borok an option? Borok in in um, Frozen Shore Barrow, uh, in Frozen Shore Hunters? Or would you, like, always go to Cave Dwellers or, like... Other units is that an option or like is it not? You you could do that um because like the unit has to get into the way of mm -hmm. the unit it wants to uh, debuff. Yeah. So it will get charged. The two plus two morale does not hurt definitely. Mm -hmm. But um yeah like normally you want to use uh the the raider discount for the attachment for that. So true. Yeah. True. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, yeah. All right. Yeah, great one. Um, all right, next one, also a Frozen Shore unit, but uh, not a really, like, by us two at least, not a really um, appealing one uh, for both of us, as we as we discovered. The Frozen Shore Bear Riders got their morale increased from six to five. What, where, where I think that does, <laughs> exactly, what does not really change what's happening, right? It's a, still a really expensive unit. It has a lot of keywords, but the charging volley is quite underwhelming, and uh, the unit is quite. Is, 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 in my point of view, it's just affecting the free folk list building quite negatively because this unit is so expensive, especially in the free folk unit. So, what's your point, uh, or what's your view yeah. on um, the bear riders? Yeah, I, I can completely relate. Like, like in my books, free folk is based around activation economy and they you really need good reasons to to make a trade off there like mac for example and they are just not in in, yeah. in my opinion yeah. and um, the buff is fine i guess but i think there was never the problem the problem is their uh, lack in offensive capabilities and mm. now we, we will cover that later now that craster cannot heal them anymore they also got a huge indirect debuff uh, regarding their stability and um, yeah, their tankiness. So for me, they are big losers of the patch. I know they are great, cool unit and fan favorite and all that, and I would love them to be 
so efficient and see them like everywhere on the table. But for me, it's yeah, just a pass. Yeah. Does the 16 wounds do anything for you? I mean, or is it like, because when I, when, when, when I talk locally or with a lot of players, like anywhere, this argument of like, Hey, it has like 16 wounds always comes up. And like, for me, I always feel right. At, but this, this does not really, really change what we just discussed. Right. Because it, especially when you keep them weakened, which is right, qu quite possible, right? When you play in, in certain strength levels or ELO ranks, this unit will just be weakened all the time. And it's just like a heavy calf unit engaged. And especially with the weakened, they won't do much. And when they lose their last, the, their second rank and they're only on the last rank, then it's done for, right? Then it's, yeah. Yeah, it's like, they are too sluggish, too slow. Um, and yeah, they have two wounds more per rank. But they also have, in comparison to other heavy calf, one less armor, right? So I don't True. really... Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah feel if you don't want to get off like, the greatest final strike of all times, I don't see the best. <laughs> yeah, okay. I don't know. <laughs> yeah, that, that that might be your next... Uh, in a friendly game, that might be your like like hidden challenge. Like, just, yeah. just for your own. I want to... Take 14 the, hits. The best, the best. <laughs> yeah. Take 14 hits, please. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> All right, so that's on the Bear Riders. Uh, Spearwives. Spearwives used to be mm -hmm. in uh, mm -hmm. yeah in season two. I remember when playing against uh, uh, Back Moby Florian on the Discord. Uh, he started out with Free Folk, and he was always bringing in season two those vicious Spearwives, like going in coordinated assault, ten hits, like sometimes over outflank, sometimes you know they were so quick, and now now they're even quicker. Uh, but with a charging volley and um, it's yeah it it was a great unit in S2 and then it got a little down in S3 because they took away the coordinated assault and changed their um, uh, their their yeah basically their aggressiveness a little and uh, now in season four um, I, I feel now way more viable uh, again playable so yeah what is your take. Yeah, you said everything actually. So no, oh, really? it's uh, no, I, I agree. Um, they they are now um, yes, they are now viable. They are now viable, okay, and cool. it's so cool to see these ladies uh, once more um, back in action. Yeah. Um, Free Folk has so many good five pointers now. Mm. It's all it's like it's ridiculous, and um, they are an offensive five point unit, so they compete um, the most I think with cave dwellers. And it's really mm -hmm. a question of taste, what you want. They are more versatile in a way. They have um, the ranged attack. Um, and they have a great attack profile in Free Fox standards to, to start with. Mm -hmm. No, they are, they are awesome. Um, yeah. Play them with Tormund. Play them just just plain oh, or with yeah. any, any cool attachment. Because of Sundering, like, you mean? Yeah, Tormund Commander. Yeah, it's, like a, it's, yeah. A, it's a good, good unit to, to put them in. Yeah, cool. And um, no, they are great, and it's it's really cool to see the ladies. Uh, yeah, yeah. Performing and outshining, um, once again. Yeah, absolutely. So with the units covered, I think um, one also a key key thing in S four are the NCUs. Yeah. Or at least one or two of them. Um, so let's do the the obvious. Craster got changed in terms of his healing capabilities, so now he can just or only heal infantry. So what's your take? Um, yeah, that's big, and it yeah. it definitely affects the viability of competitive giant play, so to speak. Like the giant list, Mac Commander comes into mind, of course, which was even on higher levels viable into certain options. I think it wasn't the best second list but yeah it was playable for sure and um does have its strength and now yeah it's it's even it, it was risky it was a risky pick before and now it's like okay um you really have to rely on your cards or your native backs to mm. to heal something up and you cannot do this clutch once per game i, I heal two two ie four wounds to my to my giant yeah. so um that is that is a little tragedy there. Um, it doesn't affect Mac in that. Like I think Mac alone, standalone, is still played. And as I said, uh, it, it's a it's a shadow nerf to 
to the bear riders, which is unneeded in my opinion. They might also uh, have said like, um, yeah, cavalry and infantry. Mm. Also something like, think about Hamas Vanguard, like yeah. even less appealing. <laughs> um, really. So this one, this one is big, but I find myself still still playing him. But I have, like when I play my Varimir list, I don't bring him. So, and I think that's good because he was like in every list, in every, every list. Yeah. And the diversity of NCUs got better um, yeah. because of this patch. So, yeah, which was the main theme, right? Yeah. Which, which which was like an overall and, theme of the whole patch and that like in i would say 99 percent or 95 percent of of all the changes i really can relate what the developer uh, developers uh, did or tried to do um mm -hmm. i'm a little bit like yeah a little bit um still not feeling pycelle this back and forth thing but 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 you know like all all over, they did a really good job in bringing NCUs back back on the. Especially like for me, it's definitely Sam Gilly. It's it's a thing that was always cool to do, but not really competitively, yeah, relevant. So now um, I I really like it. Right, Gilly is now a thing which 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 can be played. So um, yeah, cool. So on Craster. So now. Um, and I think we can cover them um, uh, both together. Is Jon Snow, the Turn Cloak Crow, and Men's Raider Artful Tactician. So the changes to Northern Resilience and uh, Skillful Preparations. Um, a small buff, but what does it do for you? Yeah, they are subtle, um, and they both were like um, playable. In, if you if you had an idea what to do with them. If you really wanted to cycle through your deck with Mans, or if you really wanted to uh, get this regroup or reform or this very important coordination tactics for whatever reason, like they they were still viable, and now mm. they are even more so. And I think like having with John Iron Resolve as an influence, that is not bad. Like that's that's not bad. Yeah. And uh, for Mans, the change is um, is now you also get a card when the unit itself activates, not only when you target. Mm -hmm. So that's basically one more card per round. Yeah. If you get the influence off. Yeah. yeah. Not bad, right? So not bad, yeah. Um no, it's good. It's good. Um I, I don't personally play them a lot, but I, I, I can see um giving them a try for sure. Mm -hmm. Okay. So the wife and counsel, um Lady Dalla, right? I think just one caveat before we start with Dala is uh, I think Lady Val, even with this, you know, she got changed in S3 um, uh, to not deal that weaken out when she retreats. Vulnerable. Oh, vulnerable. Exactly. So, um, which in my book is fine. She's still one of the most used one, used NCUs for free folks still, especially, I think, especially when you play like Mag for Mag, she's like really strong. And uh, so no, but but still Dala, right? Used to be five, now went down to four, and now I see not only you, but I see some free fall players around me, like two, three, four of them changing and sometimes taking Val out because they don't need it in their list and put Dala in, uh, especially in certain lists. So, what do you think? Because you're player too, right? Um, um, yeah, yeah, I do. And yeah. it was for um, experimental reasons first. And um, I, I found out that I really like her and that she really fits into um, the style that stylist represents, the play style. You want to grind. You really want to be there, stay there, and, and um, yeah, cause a lot of pain. So, and, and she can do that. Like, um, mm. the the effect that she adds to the backs is huge and your opponent tends to always, not always, but often forget about that, that you can have another source of damage, right? And yeah. um, Free Frog is about resource management. Like you have, it's about resource management, re like managing your wounds on the table and so on. And now you can combine, like you can really go on the backs like all the time. You don't need to worry about sword that much anymore. You, you don't do, if you don't play Mac anyway, that much. So it's so cool. And having the weakened tokens in the early phases of the game that you can lock with your man's 5.0 NCU is awesome. And like you are you are re very resilient anyway. And now the weakens 
a weekend token adds up to that. So I really love her. The only thing that you sh should uh, keep in mind is um, her effects are not um, optional. You have to. Yes. And that also counts for um, her effect on letters where you don't draw, but you discard from your opponent. So, so if you leave her as your last NCU and you, for whatever reason, the, the letters might be open, um, yeah, you, you should keep this in mind. But yeah. no, um, I, I think she's great. And um, normally I'm very skeptical about just reducing point cost to balance stuff. True. But I think in this case, it was good. Yeah, I feel so too. So what like to, to end NCUs, I know this is really dependent on the list and what you're trying to achieve, but your top three picks is now, is it Val? Uh, is it, is it Dala? Is it, it it's definitely Mans, I feel. The five point Mans. For so me, it's you... five point Mans, yeah. Yeah, yeah. And then, then I, I vary from use, like the style of list now. Mm -hmm. um, if I have infantry heavy, I want Krasta for sure. And I want mm -hmm. Dala if I grind. Um, so I, I pass on, I mean, imagine I pass on Igrit and well, that's like, yeah, yeah what it, crazy, crazy, and crazy. Yeah. If I play Veramir where I have the solos, where I have Mac that really needs to, to come into play and, and have a big effect there. I, I do, I do pick, uh, Val and, um, Igrit. Igrit, yeah. So I really, makes yeah. sense. Like, totally. Yeah. All right. So that brings us, um, actually to the end, almost. There's that one special rule where Veramir commander got from uh, or used to be zero, right? So you got, uh, remind me, you got three activations out of zero, like out of uh, out of five points. Exactly. Right. Because you so. So now point cost increased from zero to two points when you pick him as a commander. So now it's basically seven. Yes. Seven for three activations. So. Again, just from a receiving end, I think that's way more fair. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, how about you? How do you feel about it? Yeah, I think it's uh, that it was um, it was clear that something like this would happen, <laughs> and I think that's it's, it's fine because we wanted to talk about the impact um, yes. of changes, and yeah. the impacts are there because Veramir lists now are not ten activation and Mag. Now they are nine activations normally and Mag. And that is um, still hard to deal with, but it's yes. uh, easier, I guess, and more f feels more fair, maybe. Um, so reasonable change. Um, and I mean, there were times where you had like NCU commanders, for example. It's it's uh, yeah, many years ago, mm -hmm. <laughs> but and, and and they completely uh, took them out of the game for a reason because getting a free activation is very, very strong. And now I think they also realized it here and they acted um, in a reasonable manner. And now it's still a cheap, very cheap activation. Mm. So yeah, and very many lists are still viable. They are still very competitive, but um, now at least you cannot do this crazy 10 activation, ridiculous uh, yeah. stuff, including yeah. Mac. So um, I'm, I'm totally fine with the change. Uh, I found my recipe uh, how I want to play Mac uh, or Veramir Mac now, and that's good. So, and you technically you still could play ten activations uh, with Mac if you really go three four point NCUs, um, just include Mac and whatever through trappers or something. Yeah. Yeah. You still could do that. So, no, it's it, it's a good one. Great. So that covers all the changes. We're done with free folk, uh, and I think there's nothing more to say than. Um, Please reach out if you have any questions, if you have anything, any comments, if we missed anything, if there is like this one hidden, uh, you know, hidden diamond out there where you say you, you guys did not see what was really happening with this season four patch. Just put it down in the comments down below, jump on the discord, uh, connect with uh, Larix or myself or, 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 or all the uh, other um, uh, cool people on the discord. And um, I, want, I want to end uh, this video with one uh, little announcement, uh, which is uh, for me still big, or at least for hits and crits, it's it's a pretty big thing, and um, I just want to make you make you all aware of it. We launched our uh, official game mat. So this game mat is uh, uh, slightly smaller than a six by four, and you'll see it right here. Um, 
So you have a tactics board attached to it, which basically covers all the options you need from NCUs to victory points to discard deck pile, the missions, the objectives, also the um, the optional or additional uh, tactic zones that you could be uh, could be in play through Martels or Targaryens. So this is all there, and we uh, got it with our own bloody Dawn uh, hits and crits design. Uh, so definitely check it out, and um, if you if you want to like have an easier game setup, this is how I really use it because you all have the objective lines on the 10 and the 18. And you have all the objective uh, markers on the table. So even if you like accidentally move your tray on this token and you move the token a little, you still see where it is. And uh, yeah, it's just great. You can also get the tactics map alone. Let's say you have your final uh, or your your, your, your your most favorite battlefield designed by 4x4. You can just put it um, next to it. You will find the links uh, down below also. Um, so yeah, just check it out. Uh, we we feel it's a great product and we got very good feedback from the community a lot of people involved in designing it and giving feedback so we're really proud of it so check it out so that's all uh, larks any any final words from you no just uh, enjoy free folk it's a cool faction um, yeah. it's uh, definitely still competitive and even if you are not there for competitive play it has so much options so much like different approaches to the game so yeah just give them some love cool all right so until we meet again roll those crits Come for the hits and stay for the crits.